The first artist I'd like to introduce is artist Louise Nevelson. She was born in Ukraine but moved to America when she was five. She's known for her massive, large-scale sculptures using wood and found objects. She put objects inside large frames and usually painted them with one single color. The word monochromatic means one color. Anna and Nathaniel Bailey are contemporary artists from Duluth, Minnesota. They use reclaimed or recycled wood to design their mosaic artwork. Their work shows balance and unity by the way the shapes, lines, and colors are arranged harmoniously within the pieces. Some of the work includes natural wood colors with areas that are painted, while others are monochromatic. Kaya Booker is an artist from New Jersey who creates art from discarded tires and other natural materials. Her work has an industrial feel and also makes you think about materials we see and use in everyday life. She makes art out of the items that would normally be in a junkyard or a landfill. Because of the tires, her work is naturally monochromatic. Kathy Dalwood is an artist from England who uses plaster molds to create her pieces. Her work is primarily abstract and monochromatic with shadows of her abstract shapes emerging through the all-white space. In these pieces, do you recognize any items she may have used for her plaster molds? When we create our pieces, not only will we focus on monochromatic colors, we will be focusing on radial balance. There are other types of balance like symmetrical and asymmetrical, but radial balance is something that we want to show in our art. Radial balance is the arrangement of visual elements around a central point, sort of like a bicycle wheel or a flower. You're gonna start with a piece of cardboard or a piece of map board. We're gonna use a ruler to break up our square into equal sections. By breaking up the square into sections, it will help us create a radially balanced piece. Take your ruler and you first want to make a big X on your square, going from one corner all the way to the next. Next you want to take your ruler and draw lines horizontally and vertically across your square, making eight equal sections. Now you're ready to start designing your work. You will have some wooden pieces and you will also have some pieces of cardboard that you can cut to make different shapes. If you're using cardboard on your design, you'll probably want to start with cardboard first since the cardboard is thicker and that should be on the bottom underneath your wood. Cut an even amount of pieces and then start laying out your shapes until you're happy with the design. You want to lay out all the pieces first and then glue them last. After you place some cardboard pieces on your board, then you can start working with the wooden pieces. Remember, you want to keep your design unified, showing radial balance. You can also think about layering pieces on top of each other to give it more visual interest. Once you've arranged your design and you're happy with the work and it shows that it's radially balanced, then you can go ahead and start gluing everything else down. Start with the pieces on the bottom first and then just build up from there. When you are done gluing everything together, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your name is on it somewhere. You could also write your name on the back beforehand, but I forgot. So I'm going to write my name on the side and then you'll place it carefully in the drying rack. 
and then we'll be ready for next time. Last time you were in art class, we learned about several artists who use monochromatic colors and wood, tires, and other items in their artwork. Today we're going to finish our artwork by painting them in the color of your choice. We are going to be using acrylic paint in one shade of your choosing to add color to our work. You may want to have a variety of brushes from large to small to make sure you can get in all the little cracks and crevices of your work. Put a coat over the entire piece and then we're going to let it dry for a little bit before adding a second coat. Be sure to look at your piece from all angles so you can make sure you cover all of the space. You may need to switch up your brushes as you go. Once you have the whole thing painted, take a look at it from above and below and from side to side to make sure you have every little area covered. Remember, we will be applying two coats to make sure everything is evenly coated with color. After you're finished, you will fill out your artist statement, which we will go over in class. 